Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you and, and hope you're having a, a good and interesting morning here. Uh, my name is Liz Halpenny and I am Associate Security Counsel in Google. Uh, I work with the law enforcement and information security team uh, for Google in the legal department. And what we do is we um, manage all requests for user data um, globally from law enforcement, from civil courts, uh, from regulatory bodies, and from individual users that want access to their data. So um, I'm actually based in Dublin. So uh, greetings from sunny Dublin this morning. Um, and I work um, mainly uh, on data disclosure for Google Ireland Limited. Uh, the rest of my team are based in Silicon Valley and they all work on uh, data disclosure for Google LLC, along with information security for Google Worldwide. So just to explain briefly, uh, Google Ireland Limited is the service provider for all users in the European Economic Area and Switzerland. And Google LLC is the service provider for user data worldwide. So including user data for um, all African countries um, and most products. And then as you'll appreciate, because we're dealing with um, two different entities in two different countries, different laws can apply. Um, but for the most part, we try and keep our policies um, streamlined um, and consistent where possible. So I'm just gonna move on to the next slide there. Um, so given that I am um, working with uh, with African nations in this presentation, I'm going to focus it on um, Google LLC's policies and procedures for data disclosure. Um, and I think that's probably the most relevant here for um, the attendees. So uh, I'm gonna look at Google LLC's policies, uh, including the diplomatic assistance channels that you can use, um, and also different requests that you can make of Google, um, including preservation requests and emergency disclosure requests. I'm also gonna talk about the um, referrals that Google actually make proactively, um, and then hopefully we'll have time for um, some questions at the end. So, Looking at Google LLC, um, you'll appreciate that Google LLC is an American entity um, incorporated in the US and therefore operating under US law. And it has obligations to comply with laws in the US, including the Stored Communications Act um, and others. That means that Google services offered, including Gmail, Android, YouTube, Drive, uh, Chrome, uh, Meets, and Photos are all um, operated by Google LLC for, for users in Africa. Therefore, the main way in which most law enforcement and indeed individuals can get um, information uh, from Google, including content and non-content data, is to go through the mutual legal assistance process with the US. So the way in which that you would do that is, and, and I'm sure many of you will know, is to apply to the Office of International Affairs, which is part of the US uh, Department of Justice. Um, and it's designated as being uh, the central authority for US requests. Similarly, if you are looking for data from an EU user, um, Google Ireland Limited, uh, you can only go through the Department of Justice in Ireland for the information through the mutual legal assistance process. There is also help on hand in that the Department of Justice and the FBI have attaches across the world and in many African countries as well, who can assist in you in putting together your request for information to make sure you comply with the, the requirements um, and, and that you comply with the, the, the laws of, of the US. Uh, one helpful thing is, is where there is a joint investigation so where, let's say, the US and um, the FBI are in a joint investigation, um, including, let's say, for child exploitation with uh, local law enforcement in the, the country, including, let's say, Kenya, 
that US authority can go directly to Google LLC and request the data directly without having to go through the mutual legal assistance process. And then they can then hand the data over to um, the Kenyan authorities if they're engaged in a joint investigation. And it can save um, some time, as I appreciate that the mutual legal assistance process can be extremely burdensome and time consuming. Uh, one other thing I would point out is that um, at the moment there's ongoing negotiations for the second additional protocol Budapest Convention, which um, allows for um, sharing of data in an easier way where signatories agree to certain protocols. Um, and I know that South Africa has signed up to that, um, but it would be something that will, I, I think, assist um, nations outside the EU and the US and law enforcement authorities can rely on, on, on that convention. So, moving on. If you are going through the mutual legal assistance process and you are concerned that the data that you are seeking is not available or that it may be deleted, one option that Google has is that you can submit a preservation request to Google uh, prior to going through diplomatic process and Google will preserve the information for you um, until you have successfully gone through the mutual legal assistance process. So a preservation um, would be submitted to the email there, the, the LIS global email address. Um, it should be on the headed paper of your agency. Um, it must include a Google identifier, like a Gmail account, um, dates um, for what you want preserved. So for example, if you want Gmail uh, email content, uh, you would specify particular dates that you want that content. Um, and obviously the preservation will just be for the particular time. Um, it won't be an ongoing preservation. So it'll just be for the particular time you've requested it from um, and any additional data that is created after that time should actually be requested um, as part of your mutual legal assistance request. Um, preservations must also be submitted through a formal law enforcement email address. So it's not sufficient to submit the request uh, through just your personal Gmail or Hotmail account. It must come through a formal, uh, formal channel. Another type of request that Google also um, will uh, consider responding to without mutual legal assistance being required is an emergency disclosure request. So in order for Google to um, legally comply with an emergency disclosure request, which doesn't require um, legal process, is that Google must satisfy itself that it has a good faith belief that there is an emergency taking place. And this emergency must involve a risk to human life. Um, it requires disclosure without delay. And um, that data being requested is specifically related to the emergency. Um, in order to comply, Google have created an emergency disclosure request form, um, which can be submitted to our emergency records email address. Um, and that form will ensure that you meet the requirements or at least that you know what requirements you have to meet. What I would say is, is that the threat that must, must be um, responsive to a new Dior has to be an ongoing imminent threat. So, uh, for example, if there is a terrorist attack where you need um, information quickly and that is an ongoing terrorist attack, then we may respond to that. However, if you are looking for material to prosecute a terrorist in a court case and there is no imminent threat, well, then an EDR form is not going to be the appropriate way uh, to go about it. So as you can see there, I've just listed out a few questions that you might ask yourself when you're submitting an EDR form. So, for example, is death or serious physical injury involved? And what is that? Um, is the threat imminent? Is it ongoing? Um, why is the normal mutual legal assistance process not sufficient? And also, what information do you think we have and how is that related to the emergency? We will also require a specific Google identifier, including a Gmail address, 
and also the Google service that you want us to give you information from. So it could be Drive or YouTube or uh, Gmail, um, just for example. And also we find that um, there may be threats on other platforms, including Facebook or uh, YouTube, that it might be useful um, for us to try and identify the threat and assess the threat to have those links also. So moving on, I just want to talk about some of the active referrals that Google makes uh, to outside law enforcement agencies. They are not very common, um, but they are for specifically serious matters. The first um, referral that Google makes is in circumstances where there is child safety issues. So Google will report any CSAM or child sexual abuse imagery to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children or NICMIG. NICMIC then will make an active referral to a local law enforcement agency if you have um, a relationship with NICMIC. And I understand that many law enforcement agencies throughout the world um, have an arrangement in place whereby they will then go and investigate the referral once they've received it from NICMIC. We will also refer actively um, an imminent threat to life. So unfortunately, we see many suicide threats on our platforms. Um, and where we receive these, we will refer them on to either law enforcement in the US or if it's an international threat to life, we will refer them to Interpol, who will then um, take it up from there and um, potentially liaise with local law enforcement agencies. And the final um, reason that we make an active referral is in circumstances of cybercrime, um, where we see it on our platforms, um, or we have it referred to us from um, from outside, from, from customers. Uh, Google may make a referral to US law enforcement agencies in specific cybercrime cases. So finally, in just closing off, um, I just thought it would be useful just to summarize some resources that, that I think summarize up Google's position in terms of uh, dealing with crime online um, and dealing with response to crime online and how we cooperate with law enforcement agencies around the world. The first and one of the most important resources we have is the transparency report, which lists all the requests that Google get from law enforcement agencies worldwide, how we respond, the percentages of responses, um, and it can be a useful tool for law enforcement and for individuals to see exactly what kind of referrals Google gets and um, how it responds to these. Also, you'll see uh, there I've listed our privacy policy in terms of service, which is a, you know, helpful to individual users. Um, and then also I have links there for reporting abuse for specific product help centers um, and also for information on account security and how you can ensure that your account is as secure as possible to avoid um, any potential breaches. Uh, the final link there is for individual users um, who can use uh, Google Takeout, which basically allows you to sign into your account and to download um, all the information that Google holds on you. Um, and rather than having to make um, some sort of um, application to Google for that information, we've actually enabled the user to go into our platforms and to pull out the information themselves. Um, so, so we find that that can be useful and time-saving for, for our users. And finally, I'm just going to leave you with um, some some helpful maybe links. I've got two email addresses there. One um, for any queries is lizglobal at google.com. And then if you did have an emergency disclosure request, we allow law enforcement to submit these uh, to the emergency records at google.com email address. And one thing you might note is that uh, if you're submitting an EDR outside of the hours of nine to five um, California time, you can submit that um, and then call the number there um, and the, our team will pick it up as unfortunately they may be asleep. Um, so this we have an on-call team who are 24 seven around the clock ready to answer any um, EDRs that come in. So um, that's uh, my presentation. I hope it's helpful. Um, yeah.